time with TRA Talk Live. For this episode, I have invited Ms. Arbani Rai, the Senior Technical Officer, to talk about more interesting aspects of weeds than talking about weed management. When I met Ms. Sarbani a few weeks ago, she was talking to me about some interesting facts about uh, tea weeds particularly. She, she is doing her PhD in tea weeds. So she will be the best person to talk about uh, the fact that weed is a curse or bone. Uh, welcome, uh, Sarbani Rai, to this show. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting me in today's show. Yeah, as we introduced to the show, uh, people think weed is a problem, weed is a menace, weed is to be managed. And uh, of course, I have no difference of opinion uh, that the weed is a nuisance in tea cultivation. But at the same time, Tea is grown in a natural environment. It has to coexist with Hello. all other plants and trees and then pests and diseases. Uh, there can be no field which will be free from weed, pest and disease. If that is the case, it should be only a controlled condition, not in the open environment. So in that perspective, we would like to understand from you uh, the introduction, basic introduction, whether it is a boon or curse. Uh. So thank you for this uh, interesting question. Weeds, no doubt, as we all know, that they are unwanted plants which are present in all fields. In fact, they compete with the main crop for nutrients, for water, for light, space, yeah. and thereby they decrease the yield and even it increases the production cost ultimately. Yeah. So True. we know that for tea, the ideal condition for its growth is warm and humid conditions. And that same condition results in severe infestation of weeds in our tea fields. And that sometimes may lead to 10 to 50% of production loss also, if not kept under control. So yeah, that's creepers, a sizable amount. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. that's a sizable so amount. So we should always yeah. be very careful about it. Uh, and uh, whenever we spot uh, some creepers like Mycania, Ipomia, as various mm. species of Ipomia, Mycania, yeah. they are creepers which smother the tea bushes in such a way that it blocks the sunlight, it even hampers the uh, growth, then the development of new shoot is hindered. And in, uh, this is very harmful in case of young tea bushes. Because and they grow very fast. Yes, sir. they grow very fast and they, they uh, smother the bushes in such a way that mm. even the plucking gets hindered. So in, uh, in case of young tea, we need to be more uh, careful and the moment we spot, we should remove them at the earliest. Otherwise, it will hamper the branch formation as well as it will hinder the frame formations also. When you say controlling it or removing it, you mean to say it's a manual removal? Yes, manual removal. Uh, because it's a creeper. It's no, a creeper you cannot spray. Just... If you spray, then yes. it's going to kill uh, the tea plant yes, as well. Sir. I mean, sir, impact. Uh, I would like to show it. Yeah, go ahead. So these are the creepers like Mycania and then Ipomia carica. These creepers are naturally available in all the tea gardens. So these, whenever we get to uh, spot them, we should remove them at the earliest. In the past, normally we used to say, well, even the pluckers when they are going around for plucking, we tell them if you find creepers, please remove it. Uh, I think that's a practice in Northeast as well, right? Yes, sir, absolutely. Okay. Is there any negative impact or positive impact on the soils, particularly tea soils, because of the growth of uh, uh, weeds? weeds? Uh, sir, definitely weeds, uh, in a general, we can say that yes, they have a negative impact. But there are weeds like mimosa, crotalaria. Now, they are leguminous weeds. They, they fix nitrogen in the tea soil. So, if they are there, some nitrogen fixation will be done at the same time when they dead when they are dead and de uh, decayed they are adding humus to the soil so they are not as harmful as in comparison to other weeds weed as a bio indicator uh, do you have any comments on that 
Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for this interesting question. Yeah. Weeds. Uh, some there are some weeds which are uh, which are known as indicator plants. Okay. Now they give us an idea about the soil uh, status, maybe about the soil uh, fertility or the soil condition or the moisture levels. Uh, so today I would like to show a, a weed which is called as Melastoma malabatricum, and that is an indicator of acidic kind of soil. So. Whenever any planter is looking for an is looking to develop a new plantation and is going for a land survey, if we find that Melastoma malabatricum is growing naturally wild in the uh, space, then we can say at a glance that it is having an acidic kind of soil and it is suitable for tea growth. Wow, that's a wonderful thing. Yes, sir. For the new clearing area, particularly, if this weed is growing then we can take them as an indicator, indicator. of uh, suitable soil suitable pH. Suitable soil, yes, sir. Because what is the range like? It is like 5 uh, or something? Sir, uh, it indicates that the soil is acidic. We'll do, we are uh, definitely, after that, we can collect the soil and test it in some lab that to what range it belongs. And thereby, after that, when proper cultivation measures are to be taken, we can adjust the pH of the soil. Okay, that's great. Um, quite interesting. Some weeds are, last time when we were discussing, you said some weeds are having even pesticidal uh, activities. Yes. Uh, can you throw some lights on that? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, there are certain weeds like Polygonum hydropiper, Clerodendron, Clerodendron, then, uh, and there are many fawns even like Microlepia, Thelipteris. They have got certain secondary metabolites in them, uh, due to which uh, the herbivores even don't eat them. So we can utilize such plants to make some biopesticide and a foliar spray of these uh, weeds can be sprayed for the management of tea pests like red spider mite, yellow peltis. So this will be a natural way or, or, or we can uh, manage the tea pests in an organic way. It is easily available in the, all the tea gardens. So it will be locally available. It will be very easy uh, to prepare and then uh, eco-friendly even. So ulti the ultimate goal is to reduce the chemical load in the tea fields and uh, definitely uh, what otherwise we would have thrown these weeds. So we can utilize these weeds and upcycle them and use it as a foliar spray to uh, manage the different tea pests which are found in the tea gardens. Yeah, th that's a point actually. Like we don't want to grow these weeds mm. but at the same time when these weeds are removed, yes. it is better to utilize them as pesticidal uh, yes. no, compounds. Yes, sir. Uh, that's a good suggestion. Right. Is there any work done in TRA on this? In my PhD work, it, uh, a part of a portion is there where I have worked by taking different fonts extracts. Yeah. Actually, these are all the advantages that uh, TRA has. Like, we select some scholars and then they do PhD uh, in our institute. It means that we get a lot of data pool generated and accumulated uh, to the Tea Research Institute. Uh, that's one good thing you are also doing your PhD in tea. Yes. Uh, that's really good. Right. Let us change the topic a bit. Like we have uh, seen tea weeds like the grass varieties, monocot, I think. Yes, sir. And then uh, dicot, the broad-leafed broad uh, ones, which is very easy to handle or very tough to handle. Uh, sir, whenever I visit tea gardens, all the complaints are all about grasses. They are the ones which are causing most trouble because they are tough to remove. Why, now, why is it so? Like, is it having any... Yes, uh, sir. Yes. Uh, the grasses generally have got... They are, uh, they are severe competitors for nitrogen than the broadleaf uh, weeds. And they take up the nitrogen at a very fast rate. So, ultimately, the main crop gets hampered. And moreover, a single grass plant can produce thousands of seeds which are again dispersed by air, water or human-animal interference. And even the grasses reproduce by an underground stem called rhizomes. Yeah. So even if you are killing or removing the uh, grasses at a certain point, th through the underground stems, which are retained inside the soil, they come out elsewhere. So what happens? It becomes really tough to remove them uh, even after spraying or tillage or mowing the land. Yeah. So, uh, the grass varieties are really, that really tough to uh, solve it. There are other portions of uh, weeds, like um, allergic weeds. And sometimes it causes allergy to people. Even when I came to Assam, 
and the environment welcomed me with the cough and cold for two months. I couldn't recover from it, which was very, very rare uh, incident for me. I have never got a cough and cold in the past. So is there any allergic weed on the field? Yes, sir. Some allergic weeds, like one of the uh, most dangerous allergic weed is Parthenium hysterophorus. Yeah, we heard a lot about it. Yes, sir. And uh, the moment uh, we spot it, we should remove it at the earliest because Parthenium is such a kind of weed that it will cause a problem in our respiratory tract, upper respiratory tract. It will cause, uh, uh, particularly people who are prone to asthma, they should not go because the pollens are very dangerous. Okay, the pollens are dangerous. The pollens are very it dangerous. It means that the Parthenium has to be removed before it starts flowering. Before it starts flowering. So it should be removed at the vegetative phase itself. Yeah. And uh, uh, it causes some skin irritations and allergy, as well as some coughing, sneezing, because it has issues with our respiratory tract. In our tea fields, uh, sir, you won't be able to uh, spot any Parthenium within Tokelai. Okay. We always try to keep it free from Parthenium. 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 All right. So is there any weed which will be a kind of having uh, local medicinal value. People think that it is a medicinal plant. It is not really. Uh, sir, uh, in that case, I'll say that whenever I uh, go to the fields, I have seen when the workers are working there, uh, if they have some cuts or bruises, they generally take up uh, the leaves of ageratum, just crush it and put it on the cut part. And immediately the bleeding stops. So. Uh, in that case, ageratum and then uh, chromolina odorata, this, uh, this kind of weeds which are there in the tea gardens itself, they serve as ready medicines for the labors. And then in, in a case of uh, incidence of snake bites, weeds like Andrographis paniculata, which is commonly known as Kalmik, okay. uh, then Rolfia serpentina, they act as potent antivenom. Okay. Uh, Therefore, immediate rescue can be given with this medicines and then thereby some so that we can get some time and that the person can be taken to the hospital. So this indigenous knowledge uh, is very much essential uh, and they are quite, pop uh, quite popular among the uh, tea community people. Okay. Of course, we do not support any uh, plantation to have weeds. But at the same time, when there are weeds which are beneficial, people should try to utilize it yes. when they remove it at least. So what efforts we can take or we have taken in the past from TRA to identify these weeds or to tell the people that this weed looks like this, uh, this is Parthenium, like how do we address it? Is there any effort we have taken in the past? Uh, sir, uh, I would like to say that uh, there are a lot of beneficial weeds also, like the edible weeds. There are a lot of edible weeds like Amaranthus, mm. then Diplasium esculentum. It is... Uh, savored as a local cuisine over here. Okay. Not only not only in Northeast, but in different parts of the world. Dekia Hag, which we call it in Assamese. Yeah. Then there are many such other weeds which are, uh, uh, which are edible. And they have got a lot of nutritional uh, value also. So, as so you how said... Do we tell, how do we tell this to the sir, uh, planting in, community? Uh, we can hold a one-day workshop or a seminar or maybe... And right now we are setting up a weed depository in our Tokelai Museum where we are housing all the commonly available weeds from which have been collected from different gardens of Assam as well as North Bengal and we are housing them so that the students, uh, researchers, uh, academicians, people from the scientific community, planters, all are benefited from this resource. Yeah, that's a fantastic news. Uh, Sarbani is working as a co-principal investigator along with uh, Dr. Prasanna in a project on weed diversity and then weed management in which as a part of the project Sarbani is involved in uh, making weed herbarium in a larger way. Uh, I think we have allocated one uh, huge area in our museum to deposit all these weeds as herbarium. So anybody interested in uh, visiting it feel free to write to me. Sarbani, I think we have come to the end of the show. Would you like to say some closing remarks? As I already said that weeds, although it is perceived as a nuisance, but they do have a significant role in our ecosystem. True. And 
uh, we should be careful about the weeds which are invasive weeds so that it doesn't outcompete the native species which are present in our teak soil and uh, we should try to carefully monitor them and assess their impact accordingly thank you sarbani for coming to the show and then explaining about uh, the benefits of weeds and and in the next episodes we will be discussing about the weed management and uh, weed mitigation thank you thank you sir